Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it's a pleasure being here, uh, sitting among these stalwarts. I'd like to share very, um, very quickly, very few points. Um, unlike uh, Mr. Subramaniam, my experience is a little more limited. So I will speak from a more uh, practical perspective. In the National Governance Division, I, um, I look after citizen engagement, which includes awareness creation as well as impact assessment. And that has given me an opportunity to look at some of the um, good projects or projects that are classified as good. Um, some projects that are replicable and have also been replicated across the country. And there are other projects that have worked very well in a given context, but uh, we have found it very difficult to replicate them in, um, in, in other parts of the country. So stemming from that experience, uh, I just like to share a few thoughts on knowledge management and how we can use um, knowledge sharing to accelerate e-governance in India. Um, I think there are two important parts of knowledge sharing. One is that uh, not only economically it makes sense because you're learning from someone else's experience and not reinventing the wheel, but more importantly, I think it forces you to think about challenges that someone has encountered um, in uh, <clears throat> creating or implementing those projects. Two days ago, I was in Hyderabad, and the uh, SIO, NIC, who's right now in uh, AP, was then in Karnataka, and he shared an insight of Bhumi, which after even about 10 years of knowing about the project, I still didn't know. He said, first time when they were collecting the biometric, the thumb imprints of all the uh, patwaris and the BDOs to run the project, uh, they didn't realize the implication, so happily everybody came and gave their thumb impressions that, well, kuch IT mein ho hai, and you know, we are all part of it and something's gonna happen. It's only when the project was implemented, they realized that it's going to be used to ensure that no more changes are may, being made in, in, in the land records. Or if they make a change, it's going to get recorded. So people will know who has made the change. When they wanted to enhance that project, and in, include biometrics in another project, nobody came forward. Now, it's a challenge, right? And this was the first time I was hearing of it. You know, would, you wouldn't expect something like this to come up, but it did. So, um, to understand what those challenges are and how those challenges were mitigated, I think it's a, it's a very important part of knowledge sharing. The other important bit is, um, India is called the graveyard of pilots. It's also possibly called the Garden of Awards. I mean, we've got so many awards now in e-governance, fortunately or unfortunately, that it's very difficult to separate the wheat from the chaff, right? So once we start looking at issues of what's a good project or what's a best practice or what's a good practice, I think we need to define some measures which will define a good practice. From my perspective, I would say that a good practice may be defined as something that's worked in one situation and um, can offer lessons to others. The second is that it is transferable at least in part. It's not like a standard, so it's not a fixed thing. It's worked in one place and you take it exactly and put it in, in the another place. And third, most importantly, um, is that it has measurable impact or some measurable way to figure out whether it has worked or it has not worked. So based on all these, uh, uh, all these uh, imperatives, uh, Government of India about five years ago selected three projects for horizontal replication. These projects were land records, property registration, and transport. In land records, it was primarily uh, computerization of record of rights. Uh, in uh, property registration, it was computerization of the property registration department. And in transport, it was issuance of driving license of commercial vehicles and normal vehicles. And we did carry out impact assessment of all three projects across um, 13 different states. And what we found that although it was the same project and the processes were essentially the same across the country, the impact was hugely varied. So states where governance was generally good, the projects performed better. States where governance was slightly weaker, projects didn't perform so well. So the learnings that came from that impact assessment are now feeding into um, project creation that is happening now. 
and we have included several elements now in the new uh, DPR formulation and we are hopeful that it will help us design projects in, in a better manner. Just to give you a small example, if I were to look at land records, let's say in Bhumi, when they implement, because that was the base project that was used for land records replication, was uh, they had created these um, land record dissemination offices at all block levels, right? Now, Karnataka, although is a big state, in comparison to Madhya Pradesh is smaller, right? Also in Madhya Pradesh, the distances between blocks are really big, huge. Also, the basic infrastructure, when you compare that of Karnataka to Madhya Pradesh, is, is a huge difference, right? So, although the project was exactly the same, because the context was different, the impact of project was much lesser as what we had seen in Karnataka. If, you, if we took the same project to Gujarat, where infrastructure was fantastic, um, government had implemented the project on its own, the, the impact was phenomenal. I mean, the bribes were reduced to zero. I mean, we actually had people, we spoke to about 1,000 people when we did impact assessment, and they said, we do not pay now even one naira of bribe. That was a great achievement. But like I said, since the context varied, the impact varied. Um, and my final point is that while we look at good practices, knowledge sharing, these are more done in a reactionary manner, not in a more proactive way. So somebody has done a project, you go and find out what has he done, Somebody makes a case study, you come back and you share it. But we believe now that um, it is important to do a lot of proactive knowledge sharing as well. And based on that belief, Government of India has now come up with two frameworks. One is called the Citizen Engagement Framework. The first draft is available on the DIT website. Uh, I would request all of you to look at that and provide your feedback on it so that uh, we can refine the framework and ensure that it's used for um, while any project is being conceptualized or implemented. The second framework is the social media use framework. And we believe that the new technologies are going to drive interaction not only with service seekers, but uh, also among all the other stakeholders who are implementing projects or conceptualizing project or using the project. And we believe that the new technology will play a huge role. So Government of India has come up with a draft framework. That draft framework will be available on DIT website in a couple of days for people to respond to. So I would request you to look at both the frameworks, provide your feedback. We've done several rounds of consultation. And uh, before we notify the frameworks, we would love to have your feedback as well. So these are some of the um, thoughts that I wanted to share with you. And I would be happy to have your reaction on um, uh, some of these ideas. Thank you.